Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's not always great to hear the words, the last thing before lunch, so I'll try to make it as quick as possible. Uh, yeah. Can you And what he, uh, what I want to quickly talk about today is how the cloud landscape has changed, especially when we talk about what the traditional approach was before compared to what it is now. What are the challenges that this changing landscape is bringing forth, and what do you need to address it? Like I said, it's the last session before lunch, so I'll try to make it as quick, but at the same time as informative as possible. So when you look at, I mean, before we talk about the, the current landscape or the current market, I just want to quickly go back to what it was uh, to deliver applications or how the whole cloud landscape was from a traditional point of view. Because earlier, I hope it's clear because the screen here is pretty bad. So earlier we had the same very, very traditional approach of having a corporate data center. You have your applications, your websites hosted there, and then you have different branch offices which had the connectivity using a private line. And this was great uh, because you know uh, some of the things that I see as you look for, things like performance, availability, security, uh, and you know, uh, uh, scale, you were able to get in this kind of a traditional approach where you have your own private IP van and you had the maximum control over it. Well, there were performance issues. And they were mitigated by uh, adding on what you call a van optimization controller or an application delivery controller uh, in, a, in a symmetric way between your data centers and your branch offices to ensure that didn't happen. And it worked really well for quite some time. But then the landscape slowly started to change. And uh, one of the two key reasons that it changed what we call our globalization and consumerization. A, with globalization, what essentially happened is uh, most of your key stakeholders, most of your partners moved out of your organization or out of the purview of this private network. You had your global partners, you had your customers, uh, you had your extranets, your intranets, which were moving very rapidly. And you had your own internal folks, like your sales organization, which moved out to different geographic areas, and they need to be connected f uh, fast. Every, every organization became global. And at the same time, a wave of consumerization hit us, which meant that most of the time, uh, the, 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 the move to cloud and, and your IT infrastructure was being influenced by what is happening outside in the consumer world. Things like you know, uh, mobility, things like uh, big data, and also at the same time cloud, which meant that uh, at, the, at the most basic level, which meant that uh, you know, uh, the, the base of cloud is what you call outsourcing, where you lose control or you give off parts of your infrastructure to varying degree, be it the platform, be it the infrastructure, the, the stack, even the software to a vendor. And these two trends, when they intersected, it meant that this whole traditional approach was not, uh, or the traditional architecture was not really working anymore because public internet became a huge part of your IT infrastructure stack. I mean, you had your traditional architecture there where you had your private networks, your private IP networks, but at the same time, with globalization and consumerization, you had your partners, your different stakeholders spread across the globe, and also your applications, your sites being delivered from different parts of the net. Sorry, I don't think it's very clear. So you had your private cloud providers, you had your IAS, your SaaS providers, and all these uh, you know, uh, partners who are trying to, uh, you know, who are part of your IT infrastructure stack now. So, these trends changed, and your, IT, uh, your private network just became a part of it, and you started leveraging the public internet uh, by and by for your IT infrastructure. And this is where the whole cloud uh, you know, uh, trend started. But at the same time, while you were leveraging the public internet, all those advantages that you had with a purely private cloud uh, uh, medium they kind of got negated because, like I said before, you had the advantage of performance, your availability, your visibility, and control when it was a private line. But when you move to the public internet, what essentially happened is that you are trusting a medium that is decentralized, that is pretty powerful, but you're trusting that for your business architecture. And it's, it was not really designed to be a part of your business. It was not, uh, internet was basically not designed for business. And uh, at the same time, at one point where it was slowly expanding to encompass internet, 
your different partners and stakeholders globally. What, uh, along with this whole globalization, when I said consumerization, you had to also worry about building your applications and your site within the four walls, walls of the data center the best way possible. And a lot of time, this focus was only within these four walls of the data center. You tried to architect the best possible application, which delivered the best end user experience to users who are on laptops, desktops, and different locations across the globe. But when you're using the public internet, most of the time, a big factor is this whole middle mile that we talked about, which was often overlooked. And that is where the whole need for Akamai as a company came for enterprises. So Akamai is part of the whole enterprise solution stack. So before I delve into how we solve the problems or how these problems can be solved, a quick background about Akamai. We are currently a close to a $1.6, $1.7 billion company. This is the last launch results. We were founded in 98. Still a pretty small agile organization, but at the same time, we are almost the backbone of the internet. We deliver close to uh, 30 to 40 percent of the web traffic every day. And at the same time, what we have essentially enabled is to uh, have this whole high speed overlay across this internet to make it fast, reliable, and secure for organizations in different verticals, be it media, be it e commerce, be it large enterprises. And uh, as, as you can see, the stats here, we enable close to 250 billion transactions a year on this platform, purely on e-commerce. The other, other numbers, again, make it multifold. <clears throat> so what essentially have we done, again, just to give you a bit background on what we have done or what we have enabled in, we talk about India, one of the key events that we handled or one of the key ways that Akamai came into picture in this kind of a situation was during the last uh, general elections results, where the scenario that I explained before came into picture, and earlier we used to have just you know, uh, the, the uh, results being telecast over live, but this time online was a big, big focus. And we supported the Election Commission of India to deliver the results using the traditional data center or cloud approach where they had the results hosted in a central location, but they wanted it delivered across the internet. We helped them deliver that effectively without any hiccups in spite of all the challenges that were raised while delivering it through the internet. At the same time, in a, in a parallel way or for the same event, we also helped large media companies like NDTV here to deliver the same stream of the elections to the large base of users uh, during this mega event. So this is where we have been helping organizations across vertical, like I said, to make internet fast, reliable, and secure. Now, what essentially lets us do it, or you know, how we do it, is pretty simple. Like I said, we create this whole high performance overlay across the internet. It's made up of close to 160,000 servers in 2,000 uh, networks across the globe. Uh, and at the last count, I think it's close to 100 countries. And what this network gives or what this network enables us to do is uh, the key factors that, we, that I talked about before, the whole performance, the availability, the security, and scale that the public internet cannot provide we enable that on the internet for large corporations and enterprises. So what we do is we, we, we create this high-speed overlay. Sorry about that. We create this high-speed overlay across the internet. We are as close to the data center and end user on the one side, on the other side. And on these three aspects of it, the first mile, the middle mile, and the last mile, we provide the scale performance and intelligence to ensure that we enable internet to be a part of your business or your IT infrastructure. And how does this translate into the previous whole architecture that I talked about when you're moving to the cloud, when your partners, your, your customers, your uh, internal employees are spread across the globe, uh, you have your cloud providers, which are also part of the public internet. How Akamai works there is the same high-speed internet overlay is spread, like I said, spread across the globe. So we are in a point of presence, not more than a single network hop away, from your data center, from your different branch offices, from wherever your partners, your customers, your resellers, or, or whoever are, and also where your applications are hosted. This essentially means that when the traffic leaves at the most basic level, if I talk about the network, when the traffic leaves, be it your application, be it your uh, website, be it anything that is on the internet, including VPN, it hits Akamai as the first level. And then from there, this platform, with our algorithms, with our uh, technology, we ensure that the traffic is delivered the best way possible to your end user, 
could be your customer, could be your salesman, could be your partner, whoever. We deliver it the fastest way possible, the most reliable way, and we provide SLAs to guarantee that. And then also at the same time, give you the control and visibility that internet does not give you if you use it for your uh, business. And also, which you're used to when we're using the private network. And that, in essence, is how we help with the enterprises or help with you know, uh, application delivery in the current cloud era. And we have a lot of customers in a lot of uh, uh, big corporations using us. And I don't have a whole quick snapshot here, like I said. But uh, we have close to, I think, out of the Fortune 500, 398 uh, relies on different aspects of their IT infrastructure or different aspects of using internet for their business. And when we, when we had an independent survey ran, what we found out was that, and, and this is the result of the survey, that at 73% of them rely us because of the performance improvement. But at the same time, when you, when you look at the other factors, even those are really critical because uh, they agree that in a, a, apart from just improving the performance of the web assets, performance of web and IP-based applications, we also improve the availability. We ensure that there is a reduction in the IT infrastructure complexity, also at the same time, which results in a huge amount of cost savings for the customers. And the intangible part of it, or immeasurable part of it, or kind of immeasurable part of it, is the amount of productivity improvement that we bring to for enterprise class applications. And this is a quote by a CIO of a top Australian bank who relies on us heavily for their B2C and their B2B applications. And this is after they did a ROI study. Because as you know, uh, banks are very critical and very over-evaluative of any of the vendors or the services that they procure. So they did a very uh, detailed ROI evaluation. And these are the statistics that they brought up from there. And what it essentially means is that it doesn't matter what level of scale and the uh, capacity that you require from your IT infrastructure, same way that it was before in traditional, Akamai can provide that consistent performance over and, over and above everything, consistent performance, the availability and the scale that your applications or your websites need. And before I close, I mean, I talked a lot about the performance part, the availability, the scale. But along with that, one of the trends that we have ha seen happen in recent times is how when you're leveraging internet for your cloud strategy, when you're leveraging internet for your websites, where your hosted application, one of the things that you have to really worry about is the state of internet security, which has turned really bad. And one of the key reasons for that is, well, the, the whole cyber security landscape has, has again, you know, I, I often use that term, like, because of interaction of a couple of trends, it has become, the attacks have become more and more sophisticated to the level that it's not very easy to tackle them in-house. At the same time, it's been spread across the industry. Agreed that a lot of the focus of media is on attacks that happen on high-value high tar targets, or targets that are popular, like big banks, uh, media houses, et cetera. But at the same time, what we have seen f by talking to our customers and having the front end view of the industry and the internet is that it's, it's kind of democratized in a way that it's, it's spread across all different industries. And talking about democratization, it's now become much more easier to carry out an attack by a layman or by a collection or a group of individuals who believe in a certain ideology. It's very easy for them to carry out these attacks. It's as simple as downloading a couple of tools from the internet. And what this essentially means is that, sorry, it's a bit of a noisy slide. What it essentially means is that it's become really, really hard for organizations across all verticals. Doesn't matter if it's financial services, public sector, healthcare, manufacturing, they are facing internet attacks day in and day out of di different degrees of sophistication and of different varieties. I mean, at one end, you might have a crude DDoS, large-scale DDoS attacks, which gather a lot of press and bad publicity. At the same time, at the other end, you have these sophisticated uh, SQL injection or a cross-site scripting attack, which try to take out sensitive data or business information from your infrastructure. And this goes across industries, like I said. It doesn't matter what vertical you are in. You are, if you are doing business on the internet, which you would be if you have a cloud strategy, then you are at the forefront or you can be a target. And this is where we kind of uh, you know, used or leveraged, and did kind of a pivot, and leveraged the platform that he had built for delivering 
content for ensuring availability to mitigate these attacks. Just to give you a quick example, in the same you know, scenario as before, I simplified the whole architecture where, let's say, without any kind of a cloud security platform, this is what essentially happens on a, on a regular day. You have your customers or, or whoever your stakeholder is accessing your data center to access the application or website, and it's business as usual, and your data center traffic is to, let's say, 100 Mbps or a regular level. Now, when an attack happens, be it a distributed attack, what essentially they do is, doesn't matter what kind of an IDS or an IPS solution you have, the whole battle for your data center happens right at your, uh, at the entrance of the data center, which essentially means your security systems may be able, able to thwart it, but at the same time, at what cost? Your bandwidth lines would be choked. There have been instances of our customers or who are not customers at that time who had their lines cut, literally cut by their own ISPs or providers because the attack traffic on their data center on their application was bringing down the data center and the pipe. So essentially, even if your IDS and IPS is really sophisticated and uh, you know, is able to stop the attack, it stops it right at the entrance to your data center. And that's, that's what I said, like I said, we tried to, you know, we did kind of a pivot and then develop the technology which would use the same platform that I talked about uh, to mitigate the same attacks. So in the same example, if I use the same flow, on a regular day, there is a traffic that is hitting your data center. And at the same time, you have the Akamai traffic, which is slightly higher for your application because we are offloading a lot from you. And when an attack happens, the whole perimeter is extended to the cloud, which means that the battle for your data center happens right next to your attacker, where you have the Akamai servers. Your valuable assets in your data center are ready and do not face that same level of attack that an Akamai uh, server or an Akamai network is facing. And that is free to serve the traffic. Sorry. That is free to serve the traffic for your end users because uh, the, the, the valuable resources, uh, resources there are not hogged or not tied up fighting the attack, which the Akamai platform takes care of. And we are pretty distributed to handle any scale of attack. And this is something that we saw in the last uh, coordinated set of attack on the US financial services industry. We were, this is I think close to a 10 TBPS attack on a single bank, single bank's properties, and we were able to mitigate it. And you know, usually like a year back, when I used to present and when I used to talk about attacks to the say scale of 300, 500 GBPS, a lot of skepticism was there because no one could believe that this kind of attack could happen in India. And unfortunately, the scale just keeps on increasing. And 10 TBPS might seem a bit too high for now, but the, the highest attack traffic that we saw for a single customer, which was three months back, was close to 300 GBPS. So unfortunately, this is one of those situations where we are progressing pretty much along with the world. So that's all I had. Like I said, I didn't want to take too much time, so I literally deleted a lot of slides so that everyone has uh, everyone's time for lunch. But in short, when you're using, uh, when you're moving to the cloud, internet is a key part of your strategy. And uh, you would look for the same kind of reliability, the same kind of performance and availability that you're used to when you use a private network. And you would rather focus on building the right application, right experience within the four walls of the data center. And that's where Akamai can help because we create the business internet. We provide this high speed overlay which improves the performance, availability, and gives you the scale and also the security that you really need to make internet as part of your business infrastructure, and we do that for a lot of companies in different spaces. Like I said, be it entertainment, be it uh, media, be it uh, public sector, which I showed the case study for commission, be it financial services, manufacturing, any vertical. So the whole theme or the whole philosophy is that any device, any experience anywhere, and uh, that's all I had. Thanks.